us. It is going to work in us. It is going to transform us in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for your presence. I thank you, Lord, for the things that you're planning to do, O God. We surrender to you this morning, O God, in expectations, Jehovah God, that you are doing a good thing, a new thing to your Father. All for the glory, honor, and praise of your name. In Jesus' name, we pray and everybody say amen. 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 I bless the Lord for his presence in our midst. The Lord is good. He is faithful. Are we online? Amen. Uh, for those who are watching us online, uh, welcome. This is Glorious Power Church and we thank God for what he is doing in our midst. We are experiencing his presence and we bless the Lord. This year 2019 is the year of divine alignment. And last week the Holy Spirit urged us to walk in obedience to the instructions of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And I started the topic on divine direction and we talked about how the Lord will be giving us divine direction so that he may position us at the place he wants us to be so that we may fulfill his purposes. Amen. Hallelujah. And this week as I was praying and preparing, well, on Friday I was praying and preparing and the Lord spoke to me and he said, teach me teach about Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, we've been talking about Jesus the whole of the, the December month. And uh, this, this month I thought I'm going to be teaching about obedience. I'm going to be teaching about divine direction. But the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me on Friday as I was praying. And the Lord gave me a promise. He gave me a promise and I want you to take a hold of this promise and make it your promise. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord told me as I speak about him, as I teach you about Jesus, he will reveal himself to you. Praise the name of the Lord. As I continue to tell you who Jesus is, as I continue to explain and teach you about how Jesus operates, what would Jesus do? The power that is in his name, the power that is in his blood, about the power that he has. As I continue to reveal this to you, Jesus said to me, he will reveal himself to you. And it is a promise. Amen. I want you to just say, that is my promise. That is my promise. That is my promise. That is my and one thing I love about God is that his promises are yes and amen. When Jesus says that he will reveal himself to you, he sure will reveal himself to you. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I, 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 and it took me back to when I was just a little girl and I had just gotten born again and I had this passion of prayer. I, I could skip lunch instead of going for lunch. Uh, some of you know where we were, you know, Sally, you know where we used to, to, I used to go to school. Instead of going for lunch, I could go direct to the church. The school and the church were direct opposite. So I could go direct to the church and kneel down and pray and I say, Jesus, I want to know you. Jesus, I want to know you. I was just a little girl. I think I was 11 years or, or, or 10, between 9 and 11 years. And I remember one time Jesus appearing to me. I was such a young person, but Jesus revealed himself to me. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord has given us a promise and I want you to take that promise sincerely and seriously. Make it your own. It is your promise. Praise the name of the Lord. How many desire that the Lord will reveal himself to you? Hallelujah. May Jesus reveal himself to you. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I, will, I, I, want, us, I want us to read the, the first verse in the book of Hebrews. We are reading Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Amen. Waiting for some of you to settle down. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. The Bible says, are you there? The Bible says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm going to repeat that. You can even make that your memory verse of the week because I'll keep referring to this verse uh, time and time again. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm going to repeat at that time. Jesus Christ, 
the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to speak about Jesus who does not change. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today or he is the same now in the present and he will be the same in the future tomorrow and years to come. We are living in a world that is changing. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I was thinking uh, yesterday, uh, uh, my husband showed me a movie that came out in 1930, 1934. It was the first colored movie. 1934. And I thought, wow, that was a long time. But you can imagine here in 1934, they, they had TVs and they had movies. and Yeah? I don't know when the TVs came in my country, but I don't think it is that long. <laughs> I don't think it's that long. Praise the name of the Lord. And we have seen a lot of change in the technology area. Uh, radio right now, we can say radio is very old. It has seen, seen its ears. Praise the name of the Lord. Today we have the social media, we have the internet, uh, we have the, the, the Facebook, we have the uh, we have the Instagram, Snapchat, others I even don't know. Uh, Twitter, we have so many of them. Ten years from now, there will be something else that is new. Praise the name of the Lord. The world is constantly changing. And not only the world, even the people, people change. Hallelujah. Maybe the person who was your childhood friend, you went to grade school with, you might not be the same person who is your BFF right now. Because people change. Circumstances change. Nations change. The world is constantly changing. The creation. Look at the time now. We are in winter. You will look at the trees and you think they are just dry logs. Because there are no leaves. But come summer and everything is blooming, it's green, it's beautiful. Praise the name of the Lord. We are living in a system that is constantly changing. And while living in a system that is constantly changing, we need a foundation that we can trust that does not change no matter the circumstances. And that is why the word of God is telling us today that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to talk to you about Jesus who does not change. You may change because of your age. You may change because of your status. You may change because of your financial uh, level. You, you know, middle class, uh, the, the, the rich, and... Uh, the, the, the poor, praise the name of the Lord. You may change because of your status, because of your class, but Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And why am I talking about Jesus never changing? Why am I talking about this? Because you look and you read about what Jesus did while he walked on earth. And if Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, you wonder what happened to the miracles that used to happen when he lived. Have you ever wondered? Praise the name of the Lord. You look and read about the people who had an encounter of, with Jesus and how they acted and did great exploits and today you wonder, do we believe in the same Jesus or is it another Jesus? But I have come to tell you today that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want us to get that and get it in our core, in our faith. Let it be the strong foundation of our faith that the Lord we believe in, that Jesus we proclaim. He has not changed. His power is not limited. His power has not diminished over the year. His grace is there. His love is unending. Praise the name of the Lord. And something else I want you to know about this Jesus I am talking about is that his name is highly exalted above every other name. It doesn't matter what name you have. It doesn't matter whether you are a king. It doesn't matter whether you are a celebrity and you are a household name. The name of Jesus is above every other name. 
today. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want you to know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. He has not changed. He will not change tomorrow. He will not change 10 years to come. He has not changed. And his name is highly exalted above every other name. And when we talk about every other name, it means any name under the sun. Praise the name of the Lord. Any name on earth. May it be a name of a disease. May it be cancer. May it be HIV AIDS. May it be a flu or a cold. Jesus' name is above every other name. Praise the name of the Lord. So that is number two. I want you to understand that as we get deeper and deeper. And so, uh, yeah, when I was praying, the Lord spoke to me and told me, you have prayed. You have taught people about prayer. I have taught you about faith. And the Lord told me, it is time now we take the next action. After we pray, what else? Can you ask your neighbor, after you pray, what else? Amen. You know, we always say Mark eleven twenty four that whatever we ask, we believe that we have it and we shall receive it. So here we have a culture when we pray for something, we believe it is done and we just give thanks because it is, it is done. And the spirit of the Lord was teach, was telling me, I teach you the next thing, the next level. After you have prayed, you have faith, you have prayed. What else are we supposed to do so that we may continue to be receiving, uh, uh, receiving manifestation, receiving uh, great graces. How, what else are we supposed to do? And today I want us to speak about the commanding power that is in the name of Jesus. I wanted to lay a foundation to let you know that Jesus is the same yesterday and forever. And I wanted to lay a foundation and let you know that his name is highly exalted above every other name. So now that you know that, I want you to get to a level of using the commanding power in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want us to go to the book of John. We are going to see how Jesus did it. Uh, there are so many incidences or miracles listed that we can uh, study from. But I want us to read from the book of John chapter 11. This is something that we, we is a story that we know so much about how Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. John 11. John 11 from verse 41. The Bible says, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead Lazarus was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I knew that you hear me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that you have sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Praise the name of the Lord. I said I want to teach you about the commanding power in the name of Jesus. And I want us to see how Jesus went about raising Lazarus from the dead. We know the story of Lazarus. We know that he was a friend of Jesus. And we know that when he got sick, his sisters, Mary and mother, sent for Jesus. But Jesus didn't come when Lazarus was sick. He delayed. He, he, he was busy doing something else. And so by the time Jesus came, all hope was gone. They were in mourning. They were there and they had even said their goodbyes to Lazarus. They knew they would not see him again. They had already buried him. Praise the name of the Lord. So the story and the case of Lazarus was already closed. According to the sisters, according to the villagers, according to the Jews that had come to comfort these dear ones, the story was already closed and done. And here comes Jesus. And if you read John chapter 11, you will see every scenario. It is where we find that Jesus looked at them and saw the pain that they were going through. He even cried. The shortest verse in the Bible, John 11, 35, Jesus wept. He cried he, he, with empathy. He sympathized with them because their hope was all gone. They had lost a dear one. 
And the Bible says that when they took him where they had laid him, he commanded them to take away the stone. And after he commanded them to take away the stone, the Bible says Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I want you to see this prayer of Jesus. Because Jesus is the same yesterday to the end and forever. This is how Jesus prayed. I said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Jesus started with thanksgiving. He had not gone to try whether the Father will hear him. You know, when you go before the Lord, you're not going to attend or to just try or to see if it will, if it will happen or to just see whether it's going to work out. Jesus went with so much assurance that when he lifted up his eyes to the Father, what he said is that, Father, I thank you for you have heard me. Praise the name of the Lord. May we have such confidence, even in our prayer life, when we go before the Father, we are not going to try whether he's going to hear us. May we have such assurance that he has already heard our cry, that we can go and start our prayers with thanksgiving and say, Father, we thank you for you have heard us. Father, we thank you for your ears are attentive to our cry. Father, we thank you because we are your children. And Jesus continues to say, and I need that you hear me always. He had this confidence that it is not only that time when he need to perform a miracle always, all the time the father hears him. Hallelujah. Again I said Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. So he had this confidence that he hears him all the time. Every time he calls he hears him. And I want you to know that by the power we have been given by the name of Jesus every time we call the father he hears us I wanted to be in you and, and give you a confidence that when you go before the father in prayer you're not just going to attempt or try he hears you praise the name of the Lord how many of us can say confidently I know that he hears me always hallelujah that is Jesus he has so much confidence that the father hears him always and i thank god because even today the father hears us always come on tell your neighbor always. always 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 tell them until they believe always the father hears us always and he said but because the of the people which stand by i said it so jesus said this because of the people that were standing by you know, there were a lot of people who needed to see. What is he doing? Oh, this guy has been dead for four days. Why do we have to go to the grave? Praise the name of the Lord. So there was such a multitude. There were so many people who are onlookers and spectators. They want to know what is going on. Amen. You know, even up to today, we are still curious. People are very curious. Something will happen and people will just post. They want to know. They want to see. Amen. <laughs> you know, sometimes I, I, we realize that if, if, uh, if you are on the highway and, uh, and, uh, and a po police car stops somebody, pulls them on the side, the other cars will, will drive slowly <laughs> because they want to know and they want to see. The drivers want to just check and see what is, what is going on. It's in the nature of men to be curious. Praise the name of the Lord. So Jesus is saying, I know you hear me. I know you hear me always. But I have said it because of these people who are surrounding me. The people who stand by. I have said this because of them. That they may believe that you have sent me. Why was Jesus saying this? He was saying this so that he may reveal I am not here by my own accord. I am not here by my own mandate. I am here because I am sent of the Father. Praise the name of the Lord. He was saying that so that the people may believe. It is not about him. It is about the Father. He is not operating in his own power. But he is operating under the commands of the Father. He is doing the works of him that has sent him. Praise the name of the Lord. So he cried out. And when he had spoken, and this is now where I want us to, to get it, because I need us to start acting the commanding power that is in the name of Jesus. And when he had spoken out, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, 
come forth. So Jesus would have prayed and stopped at that. But after praying, after giving thanks, after doing the necessary, what is humanly possible, after, you know, the men had to pull and roll away the stone, that it was the work of them. Of the people, praise the name of the Lord. He did his work of praying. So he, he, he involved God. It is now time for the divine to take place. The humanly power is limited. We just had the power to roll away the, the stone. But now, after prayer, the divine power is the one that is manifesting. But Jesus did not stop at prayer. He did the next thing. And that is what I want us to learn and to start practicing from today. the name of the Lord. Amen. And you know what happened? A man who was dead for four days, he came forth because he had the commanding power of the name of Jesus. He had the voice of the Lord commanding him not to continue staying dead. Oh, do not continue lying in that grave. Do not continue living with the dead. Come forth! And he came forth. Praise the name of the Lord. And today I have come to tell you, church, it is time we take the next step after you pray command. You're praying for healing. After you pray for healing, command disease to live in the name of Jesus. Call it by name. Because we have been given power. We have been given authority. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want you to see someone else, Peter and John, uh, in the book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 6. You now Peter and John went up together in the tent of power to pray. And there was this beggar, uh, this man who was lame. And he used to sit at, a, at the gate that was called beautiful. And what was the work he was doing there? He was begging. He was, he was borrowing arms. So this guy looks at them. And he's like, oh, please give me. Give me something. But we find Peter and John saying, then Peter said, silver and, and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. There is a command. The guy is expecting silver and gold, but Peter tells him, we do not have. Silver and gold, we do not have. But we have something. Oh, we may, not, we may not be having the money to help you. But we got something. Tell your neighbor, you got something. Yes. Hallelujah. You may not have the connections, yeah? To, to connect somebody to get a job. But you got something. You may not have the wisdom of a doctor to treat somebody. But you got something. Praise the name of the Lord. So Peter says, we do not have silver, we do not have gold, but that which we have is what we are going to give you. What do you have? What do you have? Come on, ask your neighbor, what do you have? You know what? I have Jesus. I have something, and I have Jesus. And Peter says, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. That is a command there. In the name of Jesus, rise up. And the next command is don't just rise up. Just rise up and, and walk. They did more than pray. They did more than testify. They did more than explain themselves. They gave a command in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. And we find automatically this guy stood up and he walked. The Bible says walking and leaping and jumping and praising the Lord. He followed them in the temple. He had remained in the temple gate for so long. But after having an encounter with some people who had the commanding power and they knew how to use the name of Jesus, he did not remain at the gate anymore because there was a command. He was commanded to rise up and, and walk. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to understand that we got this power. The name that is above every other name has been given to us. You're not using your name. 
Because if you try to use your name, oh, nothing might happen. <laughs> oh, the demons might laugh at you. But we have a name that is high, a name that is exalted above every other name. And it is the name of Jesus. I have come to tell you that you got something. And because you have the name of Jesus, and because you have Jesus, and not only that, you have been given the authority to use that name. Freely, the name has been given for us to use. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You know, I, I was giving somebody a, 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 a reference. And I told them, just go and say, Pastor Lucy sent you. Praise the name of the Lord. It might not be such a, a huge name. But wherever I send that person and they say, oh, Pastor Lucy sent me. Like, oh, Pastor Lucy sent me. Automatically, whatever they needed, just because they said I sent them, they were assisted. Praise the name of the Lord. Because of the relation I have with the person I had sent them to. If my name can at least help somebody <laughs> achieve something. What about the name of Jesus? That is above every other name. And we have the mandate to use it. You have the permission, the permission granted for you to use this name. And as long as we understand this, we can command situations. We can command anything. We can command the mountains in the name of Jesus. John 14 verse 14, the Bible says, If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 14, 14. I want you to mark that. You can make it a memory verse too. The Bible says, if you ask anything. You know, I like that part. It doesn't say if you ask for this and that. It's not about if you ask food and if you ask for a car, you won't get it. <laughs> the Bible says, if you ask for anything in my name, you will I will do it. Jesus is promising us that if you ask anything in his name, he will do it. Asking is when we pray. Whenever we ask anything in the name of Jesus, there is an assurance that the Lord is going to do it because this name is very powerful. The name of Jesus. The name above every other name. Luke 10 verse 19. I see our time is... All, all gone, but allow me to read two more verses. Luke 10 verse 19. Are we there? Luke 10 uh, verse, verse 19. The Bible says, Behold, I give unto you power. Say power. Behold, I give unto you power. Tell your neighbor, I got power. <laughs> Amen. And this power, we have already been given. Jesus is saying, Behold, I give unto you power. And what is the power to do? To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. That means the enemy has power, but the power we have is more than the power that the enemy have. The power that we have received from Jesus is above the power of the enemy. And Jesus is saying, behold, I have given you power. I want you to know that. Don't get scared. Don't be afraid. Because the power that we have is much, much more power than all the power of the enemy. It is above praise the name of the Lord. It is above all powers of darkness. It is above every principalities. It is above every territorial spirit. It is above every kingdom. Every dominion. It is above praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says and nothing. Say nothing. You know the English is very sweet when you know the meaning of these words. Nothing. Nothing means nothing. Nada. Nothing. 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 Tell your neighbor, nothing. nothing. Uh -huh. You know, nothing means nothing. Nothing shall by any means harm you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. I want the word of God to become alive in us and I want us to get it 
and just in the simplicity of its meaning, let us just take it as it is says that nothing shall by any means, any means means any means. It doesn't matter whether the enemy will try to pass any way that through your friends, through your colleagues, any means, nothing. I don't know whether you're getting this, but I'm saying nothing shall by any means hurt you. You are beyond and above hurt. Because the power that we have is an assurance that it is above every power, above the serpents, above the scorpions, above all the powers of evil. And nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt us. Praise the name of the Lord. In the final verse I'm going to read, and I want us to get into that level of commanding. I'm going to read um, Matthew. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8. Jesus said, uh, let me read from the uh, from verse 7. The Bible says, and as you go preach, saying the kingdom of, God, of heaven is at hand. Jesus is sending, is giving instructions to the disciples. He's sending them out. As he is sending us out today. So as you go preach, tell the people the kingdom of God is at hand. And that right now, the kingdom of God is here because it was already manifested. Jesus died on the cross and now we have reconciliation with the Father. Verse, verse 8, it says, heal the sick. I want you to know this because I want you to understand that you have power to do this. Amen. Do not despise your age. Do not say that, you know, I just got born again. I'm not, I, I'm just a baby Christian. They're not baby Christians. Praise the name of the Lord. You have this power. And this power is to do what? Number one, heal the sick. Number two, cleanse the lepers. Number three, raise the dead. I'm yet to see the dead raised in our generation. Hallelujah. <laughs> Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Just like I said last time, there is an environment you can have with the presence of the Lord that no demon can be able to coexist with the presence of God. Cast out the devils. And what I want you to know is that freely you have received. Tell your neighbor free. Amen. It's free. It's free. Freely you have received, freely give. Freely you have received, freely give. This does not say give money, a certain offering to receive healing. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm not against healing, I'm not against uh, uh, giving, but this does not say that you have to pay a certain amount of money to get a prayer, to get a prophecy. You know, we are living in an era. I have heard stories of people, uh, why somebody is asking for some money so that they can prophesy. The Bible says, freely you have received, freely give. And today I want you to get it and understand that we have the commanding power. We have that authority through the name of Jesus. Through the name of Jesus, let's heal the sick. Through the name of Jesus, let's cast out devils. Through the name of Jesus, let us raise the dead. Through the name of Jesus, let us cleanse the lepers. Freely we have received. Freely we will give. We are to give freely. Did anybody pay to receive this power? Did anybody pay to receive the permission to use the name of Jesus? No, we have been given freely. And if it's at no cost, at no charge, then why are we not using the name of Jesus? Why are we not using the commanding name of Jesus? Why are we not commanding our situations? Why are we not casting those devils out? Praise the name of the Lord. Why are we not declaring healing and declaring health? Divine health, because it is our portion. 
we have the authority. We have the power that is in the name of Jesus. And we have a promise that whatever we shall ask in his name, he will do it. Praise the name of the Lord. So this week, it's my prayer that we are going to take the next action. After prayer, we are going to continue using the power granted to us by the name that is above every other name to command the actions that we need to see. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the things not seen. So what you see in the spirit, what you see by the eyes of faith, we have the power to command them into being and they shall be. They shall come to fruition. They shall manifest in our days. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's stand before the presence of God. We got the power. The commanding power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just open your mouth and start thanking the Lord for giving you the, the power. Giving you that, uh, that honor to use the name that is above every other name. Mando Just open your mouth and thank the Lord for 